Okay, so now we've had a chance to look at proteins and how they connect with reactions and how you might modify a reaction or generate a reaction or a compound. And now that we have a bunch of proteins connected to a bunch of reactions, we're interested in editing the pathways, the metabolic pathways that are involved here. So let's click down on the page here and just click through to lysine biosynthesis. Now as I mentioned in the introductory slides for this second half of the Making Your Own Model Organism Database presentation, the first thing you're going to want to do if you're really interested in the metabolic pathways in your organism is probably to delete some of them. And after that you may want to make some, you may want to edit some, you may want to import some. So um, let's look up here and right click on the pathway name, edit options. And of course one of the edit options is to just plain old delete the frame. And you're going to do that if you don't think the pathway exists in your organism. Otherwise, we have the pathway editor and the pathway info editor. Now, the info editor and the pathway editor do two different things. So let's just click away from this menu. The pathway editor says what reactions are involved in this pathway. It's actually making this skeleton of the pathway, so this part up here. The pathway info editor lets you fill in all this material down at the bottom. So the free text entry. Um, that kind of thing. Now say for example we want to make a new pathway. Our new pathway is going to be a subset of this lysine biosynthesis pathway. It's going to be the first four reactions. Okay, so we'll say pathway new and this is what the pathway info editor looks like and Normally you have to open these separately. In this case, since we're making a new pathway, the info editor is going to come up first and ask us to put in at least a name for the pathway and maybe some general info. Then the pathway editor will come up and ask us to put in the reactions that are in the pathway. So all we need right now is a name for the pathway, our lysine pathway. We could have synonyms, we could have a summary. we can have an evidence code for the overall existence of the pathway. That is, why do we think this as a coherent pathway exists? And of course, a pathway is a conceptual unit. It's a bunch of reactions, and we tend to think of pathways as pathways because they're, you know, the first step in the pathway is inhibited by the product of the final step in the pathway. They're all transcriptionally regulated together, this kind of thing. So you get to decide what you think of as a conceptual pathway if you're adding a new pathway and you can check some of our publications for our philosophies on what constitutes a, a worthwhile useful pathway. For now I'm going to put in my facetious summary here and just scroll down a little bit to show you that you can link out to databases we have our normal citation functions you can credit things, you can say what the last curation date was so we'll do that and then hit OK And now it's shunted us over to the pathway editor because we don't have any contents. We have a pathway with no reactions, and that's not so good. So what we're going to want to do is add reactions. So there's lots of ways to do this. We can search for a reaction and add it. We can add a reaction from our history. So say we just clicked through a bunch of reactions we're interested in. They'll be in the history for the software. And if you need a refresher on history, you can check the documentation for the Pathway Tools software. We could also actually generate new reaction frames right here if we needed to, etc, etc. Right now, I'm going to find and add reactions. Now, I can actually find reactions by the compounds involved in the reaction, or by the reaction ID, or an enzyme name, or an EC number, and I'm going to just go with an EC number right now. Okay, so we added our first reaction, and it's added over here on the left because we haven't tried to stitch it together into the pathway yet. This is our sort of holding space for reactions that we want to use and we're not committed to using them. Okay, now we'll add a second reaction and again it heads over here to the left to the holding area and now I'm just going to go ahead and add two more reactions.
Okay, so now we have our reactions on the left in the holding area, and we have our working area over here. And so what we can do is we can pick one of the reactions on the left, and let's pick the one that we know comes first, aspartate kinase here, and click on it. Now it's been highlighted in red, and it's highlighted aspartate semialdehyde dehydrogenase here in green, because this reaction is the only logical successor to this reaction, because well, it's not necessarily a successor, it could be a precursor too, but it's the only one we can actually connect to. Because this one is aspartate on one side, aspartyl 4-phosphate on the other, and this is, uh, here we go, aspartyl 4-phosphate. So let's just say, yeah, that sounds good. Now we have part of our pathway generated. Look, a connection. So now what I can do is I can choose another reaction, one that's already on the screen, and click on that. Now this reaction is again highlighted in red, and over here we have another reaction highlighted in green. And that happened because, again, let's look at the left and the right side here, L-aspartyl 4-phosphate, L-aspartate semialdehyde. And you notice these are in the main here and these are on the side. The software is actually figuring out what it thinks are the main components, you know, the small molecule whose progress through different chemical conversions we're really tracking it may make a mistake on that every so often and you can actually go in and tell it to change that but most of the time it's pretty good about it so it tells us well based on the reaction you picked the only reaction I can connect to that is this one so let's click on that now we have three in a row handy now finally we're gonna click here and it says yeah there's just this one you can connect to okay now I'll have to scroll to show you we have a four-step pathway as easy as that and again sometimes quirks will happen, you'll need to go in and tell it, no, 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 really, the aspartate is what matters and not the ATP. And that's just going to happen every so often, and it's fairly straightforward to figure out. You know, you have a lot of functions up here under reaction where you can say, choose main compounds for a reaction. If you didn't mean to have a reaction in the pathway space in the middle here, you can delete a reaction from the pathway. <clears throat> you can disconnect a reaction, etc., etc. And there are other pathway tools that will help you get going and putting together a pathway. But basically, if a pathway makes sense, you'll be able to put it together really easily in the pathway editor. So now we will exit keeping our changes, and we have our lysine pathway in its beautiful four steps there. And with derived things like locations of map genes, a pathway evidence glyph that says what the current evidence status is for all these reactions. They're present. And they're not unique to this pathway, and of course they're not because this is actually a subset of another pathway. And now once again, we could save. And now that we've put in the basic structure for this pathway, we can go back in, we can edit in some additional commentary. If I scroll down, you'll see our facetious commentary here. Let me scroll up to catch that. Our summary goes here. But yeah, if you look at Metapsych, you can see an example of the more thorough side of pathway curation. Depending on the purpose of your model organism database, you may be fine with just with saying, this pathway exists. And if you are just saying, this pathway exists, then you'll want to make sure that you do put a citation either in the summary or you put in uh, a citation in the evidence field in the pathway info editor. Showing evidence for that particular pathway and you can put in outside links, credits, etc, etc. So now that you've had a chance to work on pathways, proteins, reactions, compounds, the last two components that you're going to want to look at are genes and transcription units and along with them transcription factors. Okay, so that's how we'll round out this webinar. We're going to end this little video component here and when we restart again we'll be looking at genes, transcription units, and transcription factors.